and craft program. My name is Diana Puta. Today on Takara, we have a young and inspiring young man by the name of Chike Aguago. Chike is not only a shoe designer, but he also dabbles in other leather items. He's going to be showing us how we can make a pair of leather shoes, and possibly we may learn something from him. This is a self-empowerment program, so you know what? Why not empower yourself? I'll be right back so we can get started. And you're welcome back to the program. I'd like to invite my guest, Mr. Chike Iguago. Chike, Good evening. it's a pleasure to meet you. Good evening. And uh, wow, such a handsome young man. <laughs> and very talented, I must say. Thank you. TK, what do you have for us today? Tell us what you're going to show us. Well, I have a lot of good footwears here. Some slippers, sandals, belts, wallets. Mm -hmm. Though I would have brought most of my products here, but short notice. So yeah, not only that, me. the set can only take but so much. Yes. You know, yes, um, yes. shoes. I mean, men and women, we all love shoes. So I think that you must have a large clientele. Yeah. Could you tell us exactly who your clientele are and, you know, like, um, give me like one example of some big person that you've made a pair of shoes <laughs> from besides myself. <laughs> well, I've made footwears for the DJ in Kogi State. He's a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And um, I did some shows too, so a lot of cl uh, clients got some footwear from uh, like the so selection. Yeah, so you have a lot of musicians too that come in and make uh, once in a while, shows. Yeah, once have you ever made anything for Fella? No. Oh, shoot. I have to say, you're too young then, then right? <laughs> I wasn't bored. Yeah, because he used to wear some awesome shoes, yeah. and I've always admired his uh, his yeah. his feet wear. So, um, but anyway, back to Takara. Yeah. I want to ask you. This business, shoe designing, did you, uh, do you find it very lucrative? Exactly, it's damn too lucrative. I know because, I'm just asking that because I know the it's viewers lucrative. want to know, but when I called you to come on this program, it yeah. took you so, uh, like two or three weeks before you could find the time for us oh, because okay. uh, you're like, very busy. Like a month or two, Seth, not uh -huh. two or three weeks. But how long have you been doing this? The footwear making? Yes. Uh, it's going to like um, six years. Six years. Okay, so you came out of school and you went into doing yeah, making designing well, shoes. Yeah, while I was still in school, I so still started designing that, That's footwear. good. Now, we got some bad shoes on this table. As a matter of fact, you're going to leave a lot of these shoes here when you go in, because <laughs> we're already collecting them for ourselves. And yeah. I'm sure you always, that always happens to you. Your friends will see you, you'll be wearing a slamming pair of shoes, and yeah, they're like, you know, you probably walk home in bedroom slippers, Once in a plastic happens. rubber slippers. <laughs> it happens, yeah. it happens. Yeah, it's good, because these are really creative. So where do you get your supplies? How hard, it is, how hard is it for you to find the things you need? Where do you get your inspiration? Well, uh, Basically, everything is God, first of all. Mm -hmm. You have to put God first yeah. in everything you do. So I believe that. God inspires me a lot. I don't even know where the designs come from. It's not weird. I just... Yeah. Just, I mean, creative, people, creative people are like that. Yeah. And I noticed one thing. One of my, my best designs come up from my mistakes. So yeah. it's when I make mistakes, yeah. I now challenge myself to correct yeah. them. Yeah. And I now make very, very good design from that. Cool. So your raw materials, where do you find them? Well, I go around. Go around a while. Maybe sometimes I go to Mushin. Mm -hmm. I get gay. Depends on where, you know. And then once in a while I travel to the east. I see you also have some leather belts here. And True. you have some designs. Do you only make belts for ladies? Or I do make or for ladies, but um, I told you, shutters of supplies once in a while. You don't get to get all the materials you need. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a little time to work with now. 
Yes. So I could not bring Is much. it time now or is it like, you know, one needs to also have the investments to do the kind of thing that you want to well, do? Well, both. Your scale is growing big now because yes. you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. You understand? And then later on in our programs to come, we're going to be showing um, young entrepreneurs, you know, where they can get some funding from. We'll come back to that. You've got to keep watching these episodes so you'll learn more about that. Yeah. Okay, and also if you don't... Um, if you missed this program, you can go to our website and check that out. We'll give you that information. But meanwhile, show us the project you came with today and, and what is that going to be? Well, I want to make a simple feminine footwear, mm -hmm. something you can wear in the house, not so much designing on it, mm -hmm. you know. Because of time. <laughs> you know, of time <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Because time and um, this is not my workshop, so mm -hmm. yeah. I can't get to lay my hands on all the tools I need. Yeah. That's why. So I'll just make something simple. The basic thing one needs to learn about making the footwear, um, you have to start from the scratch. Mm -hmm. Originally, I was supposed to make this. This is a foot last, but um, it has been modernized for us, and then we we'll buy this in the market, you know, at a very good price. We we'll buy it in the market. The shapes are there, all of sizes. Cost? One of these could cost like a thousand five hundred naira. Really? Okay, not too bad. Okay. Two thousand. It depends on the shape. Mm -hmm. You know. So you have to buy one of these for each size of the shoe. Yeah, it's for each size. Okay. okay. I have them and from like sizes thirty six to like forty six. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so know? you have a collection of them in different sizes. Yeah, different sizes, okay. different shapes. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make it a just one leg of a footwear, and then you start by making your pattern. You start by making your pattern. You know, um, it depends on what you want to make. Like I'm gonna make a simple tongue slippers, uh, something like um, something like this. Mm -hmm. But it's not gonna be this design. But it's gonna have this format on top, but in a very very more scanty way, you know, mm -hmm. not to elaborate like this, you know, with all the sewing and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we we'll start from there. Um, I have to pick something first. Okay. Yeah. Let's Excuse me. That. Okay, viewers, we'll be right back so we can get started on making our first pair of shoes. <laughs> Chike is going to show us how he's going to begin to make his design. Chike, let's go. All right. Um, as I said earlier, the first thing you have to make use of your last. You need the last, and then you need to create your pattern. Uh, what I've done already is um, I've already done it before now, mm -hmm. just to save time. Well, this is a pattern you work with, first of all. And Let's the pattern say. is made from? It's cardboard. OK, just a cardboard pattern. Yeah, okay. it's a cardboard okay. pattern. So this is okay. a pattern, a simple one. Then what you do, you trace it out on the leather which you want to make use of first. We're going to manage this, we're going to use it and make just one leg, just to save time, you know. So we're going to make a footwear of this. And this is the pattern for the upper, this is the pattern for the this interior, okay, okay. as the insole, that's what it's called. So first thing we do, we get the insole shape out so we know what was left from the leather. You can make use of any instrument on the table, like something sharp, scissors, a ruler, or a needle, and trace it out. You know, just get to trace it out on the leather. 
Like so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trace it out there. Make use of your scissors. Cut it out. So the one thing you have to know about this is that precision really, really matters. You take your time to do everything and you get the results. You just don't rush things, you know? Especially with this bottom piece because it's, um, it has to be accurate because of fit, I assume. Yeah. Okay. So you cut it out. Some people find it difficult in cutting. And um, I don't see what's difficult in cutting mm. this kind of thing, you know? Well, because well, you know I how guess, to use your uh, scissors. Yes. That is why. I'm already used to it, yeah, so that is it. it's something you'll learn over time, you'll get used to it. But this is quite soft leather, it's not very hard, so... Yeah, it's it depends be. on the texture, there yeah. are different, different textures. There are some I have to use so much power to cut, <coughs> you okay, know? Yeah, yeah. 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 But for this particular leather. shoe you want to do, you, you advise we use a softer leather or does it matter? Um, it depends on the... The design? Yes, it depends on the design. So then it doesn't really matter? You yeah, it doesn't really matter. Them. You can use any kind of leather to make your footwear. It's okay. just to know what to use and do, you know, okay. use for, not to use for the, for the leather, for the, for the design I'm making, sorry. Okay. Give it some life. So what I usually do, I put some holes on them, you know, so I can get some good looking... Design. Yeah, on it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I start by using my hole puncher. Simply, I can just pierce some holes here, you know, just to... Actually, that's like your trademark, because I see yes. you, you've done something like that here. Uh, so. Yeah, cool. I usually do it on some footwear, but not on all. Mm -hmm. And then you get a cardboard, which is what you buy in the market. You, okay, you can purchase this. Sheets. Yeah, you can purchase this, but it won't come in this shape. I cut it to this shape. Does it come like on a piece of cardboard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A big shape, okay, like so square. You can piece it down yeah. into how many you need. Okay. You cut it in what you yes, want. Yes. So I get this, and then what I usually do, I don't leave this. Just put it straight up like this, because if you do it this way, um, when you are doing your finishing work, you have to gum this to the sole. And then when you gum this to the sole, this is cardboard. Water can penetrate and it will get weaker. But if it's leather going directly to the sole, it will be more difficult for water to penetrate and then make the gum weak. Okay. Yeah. So what we do, what I do, I don't know what the other guys do. Yeah, I reduce the, yeah, my technique, mm -hmm. I reduce the shape of the cardboard under so that okay. the leather will hit directly to the sole. Okay, so you would say you, you would increase reduce, this yeah, down decrease to a quarter size. inch? Yeah, I'll decrease the size down to what I need. Okay. So that um, it could be... Yeah, mm -hmm. should be okay. Then, without wasting more time, stick it down to this place by using my OCI gum to stick it down to the center. Mm -hmm. Let me do that briefly. It didn't take much time. OCI gum. Is it Evo stick? Plain yeah, Evo, Evo stick? stick, exactly. Okay. That's too much. It's Evo stick you make use of. Mm -hmm. You know? You just gave it a like, good pop. It did like funky <laughs> names. So that's what it's on. <laughs> But OCI, what is that? Uh, well, it's the name of the product. Okay, you know, okay. the name of the company. Yeah, yeah, there are different yeah. products in the market. Mm -hmm. So this is the one that works best for most of us that are into this footwear okay. thing. It's always good. Before, I used to use um, the one, the Evo stick. There's one Evo stick that is in the market. It's like light and butter color, but it's no more in the market now. So I have to make do with what I see. Yes, yeah, and you what know. you've also used and found good. Yes, so that's what I do. Yeah. It's really, really, it's fun. Mm -hmm. To I me, see. it's fun. I would Future say that doing fun. what you enjoy doing is fun. I'm telling you, know? you, it's real fun. So leave this to dry for a mm -hmm. while. Mm -hmm. and stick it back, you know, it's a bit of rush work. Yeah, you have we to understand dry. that. You have to follow <laughs> protocol, you know. Yes. Yes, <laughs> stick it. Then um, I also like to put a design on this. I like to put, I love threading work, as in putting some and hand stitching on this. And this would be threading work. Yeah, this is machine threading here. Mm -hmm. Then this is hand stitching. That's okay. hand stitching on that. And you hand stitched through the holes yeah, that you put. Yeah. That's good. That's it, all those kind of things, like That's a good the idea. stitching here. Yeah. This okay. makes it look unique and different. So I just, um, Pick up my hole punch as usual and then pierce some holes here. Maybe like, it could be any style you want. You could think of sewing an X, 
could think of swing a zigzag. Just any design, nothing in particular, you know. I was trying to be creative as possible. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Then I put my holes there. I pick up my needle and my thread. Okay, this thread for one. It looks like fishing wire. Mm, not exactly. It's okay. What is it called? It's just a thread. Mm -hmm. It's cutting kind of thread. I, I yeah. don't know what to call it exactly. Yeah, but it's definitely not regular sewing thread. It's very thick. No, it's not. Okay. I, I it's very thicker strong. Ones. They're thicker ones than okay. this. You and know? you can buy this at the places where you buy yeah, you yeah, raw yeah. materials for making them shoes. You can get them there. Yeah, so they won't go into the traditional market and go and buy thread or regular thread or sewing cloth. No, 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 no. It's that different. Won't, that won't work. The that texture work. of this thread is definitely, definitely different. It's thicker than yes. normal. I have to double it. Sometimes the thread cuts. Customers complain, but you know. Try to satisfy them all the time. That's yes. why I started doubling it. Yes. Customers are always right. Always right. We learned that in our business. So this was a simple pattern I put on this. Yes. Beautiful. Nothing too serious, mm -hmm. you know. Let's try to be creative as possible. And I like to see men that can use their needle and thread. I'm mm -hmm. sure you can sew other things very well as well. Yeah, I can sew. I can mm -hmm. sew. At least it's, I it's sew very, my. It's needed. It's very necessary in your profession as well. Yeah. To be able to run your machine and stuff, so that. Yeah, you have to be able to run a machine. Can um, do your own designs. Exactly. When I got my machine and I said I'm making use of it myself, I really, really saw a lot of difference in yeah. my designs by doing that. You burn the thread, then press it down. Okay, it doesn't have to bounce to the end. If it bounces to the end, you will cut. You start it over again. again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a simple design I've just got in here. So um, I pick up my pattern on the little leather I have here. I get out the shape which I want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get out the shape which I want. I use my scissors, you know. This is just the major thing I need here. Yeah. This it shouldn't be done by anybody at home because <laughs> <laughs> it's only if you have such experience as I do, yes. you so now. You can freehand. Yes, because. Yeah. Um, you can't see what I'm doing, but I can see what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing, and I know what I want to cut. Uh -huh. So it's all about precision here. I didn't really get a design out of this, but I will make one from Because the small pieces that you from have the small pieces I have, too. and I'm thinking of um, what I'm going to do next. And I think I've gotten what I'm going to do next already in my head. <laughs> You're wondering what I'll make use of this for. <laughs> well, let's watch and see. Make it of my gum again. Mm -hmm. But really, if you were doing this, you would use your machine. But I could use a machine to do that. Yeah. You know? yeah. So they'd be strong. Yes. It would stay very well and it would be strong. Just apply a little gum here, not too much, so that um, it will hold down. <laughs> Stick it down. Stick it here too. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go to our puncher again. Pierce holes through so that I will sew it with my hands. Now I'm supposed to use a ruler to do this, but because I'm used to it already, I know where to put my holes. I'm not using a ruler. And you're feeling it too yeah. behind them. So sure. for a beginner, make use of a ruler, measure your holes first. But I already know what I'm doing. I just want to save some time. I don't have to use my ruler. It's right here. <laughs> just in case. Yeah. Then I've done the holes here, and I have to attach, I have to make here stay together too. So I have to sew it. Ordinarily, I can use my sewing machine to sew this place together, but I don't have it here, so I'll make it on my hands to sew it again. I pierce some like three, four holes through this side here. You know? And I sew it together again. This kind of stitching is something you have to watch right now. Hmm? Because I want to make a straight stitching here, not something like this. I want to make it a straight stitching. Now I've reached the top here. When I'm coming back to where I started from, I go in here, watch closely. Where I come out from this place, it's not going to come out from that same spot. Yeah, I'm not going to go back into that same spot. Mm -hmm. I'm coming out from the side here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to end up at this part here. Yes. Then when I go through this part, when I'm coming out from the last side, I come out from this side, and I end up at this side. This technique that you're showing us, is this something that you've 
been doing over time and discovered, or is it something that you well, had to learn from s the masters, shoemakers in those mm, days? Or well, how did you just um, well, I won't tell you any lie. Uh, the thing there is that I practice this thing on my own. I haven't learned this from anybody yet. Mm -hmm. I haven't gone to any formal training. Okay. You melt it down, do the same to all the sides. Okay, we're well, almost getting to the end of this footwear. This is end of stage two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is our upper. And we have our interior ready. Okay. So this is our upper. This is gonna be on this. It's taking shape. Really, it is. And you know what? That really looks good. Just, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, not to get a thing, but it's good. I like it. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna give him some chance to finish coupling this up for us, but I'm gonna bring you back so that you can see him in the process of it. Just give us a second, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Maybe you can just go and get a soft drink, okay? Thank you. <laughs> so that it will stick down very well. So after joining it, you have to level all this place around and we'll through with the slippers. Mm -hmm. Cut it down to shape. You want to level it with the, with the scissor or do you use your machine? We'll use the machine. Okay. We'll bring it down with the scissors first. Yes, okay. Before using the machine. So this is a footwear that I've just made, simple one. If you want thing, final thing. product. Yeah, final product. Very nice. Well, TK, thank you so much because uh, you really enlightened us on how shoes are made. Yeah. I'm sure that we're going to bring you back on the program so you can show us some of your other items that you you design. Yeah. Your belts, possibly. I see you have um, your phone pouch. your phone pouch, and yeah. I'm sure you're creative in so many different things. Yeah. I'm sure the guys would like to know more about you and how they can, how you can be reached. So we're going to show you that at the end of the program, how Chike can be reached and uh, his contact. And um, we hope that you would visit us, visit us at uh, Takara underscore TV at yahoo.com and send us your emails. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. that you would want us to see on Takara, or if you also just wanted to find out more about the patterns of any of the things you're going to be seeing on these episodes, then I advise you to contact us at www.takaratv.com or send an email to takara underscore tv at yahoo.com. <laughs>